Susan Gardner here from Municipal World. We're at the 2019 Spring Workshop for the Ontario Municipal Administrators Association in Niagara-on-the-Lake. Joining me in the Municipal World Media Centre is John Muscarin from Aird and Bearless. Welcome. Thanks for having me, Susan. So you uh, had a great presentation this morning, a uh, panel of folks talking about new changes in Ontario uh, that recently came in on March 1st uh, around uh Complaints, integrity commissioners, all of that. Yep. Um, tell us what the tell us what the key changes are. Oh, uh, fundamental key changes. One is uh, the Municipal Conflict of Interest Act, which, as you know, was always a private application by an elector who had to fund it all by him or her uh, her own uh, funds. Is now something that anyone can go and ask the integrity commissioner to do for them. So the integrity commissioner can go and do the private application process that used to be uh, on the back of uh, of an elector. Uh, so that's one huge change. Uh, the second change is now integrity commissioners can give specific written advice to council members on the MCIA. And that's absolutely, I think, a, a game changer because uh, you have to feel for these uh, uh, members of council. Some of them are not getting paid terribly much. They are doing it for the public interest and uh, for the public good. And yet they have to be, be beholden to these relatively complex rules dealing with uh, a pecuniary interest, when to declare, when to recuse yourself. And so now they can come to us, integrity commissioners, for advice. I think those are two very important things. But correlated to that, Susan, is the cost. And I think that's what's worrying municipalities a little bit, yes. is they're saying, wow, we understand this, but how much will it cost us? And right now, my answer is, I don't know. I don't know how many calls I'll get or really how many written requests I'll get. And by the way, it has to be in writing and my response has to be in writing. Of course, you're going to say, well, that makes absolute sense. And council members should be uh, advised of that because a lot of them pick up the phone and go, you mean I have to put everything in writing? And the answer is yes. And that's not a municipality's requirement. It's not the integrity commissioner's requirement. It's the requirement of the statute. So those are the real big changes that have, I think come down. And one's going to be a cost factor, I think, for municipalities. So I think they should be retaining integrity commissioners who know something about the MCA. And when I say know something, really know it, have some expertise in it so to be able to give the advice and not reinvent the wheel every time and also be aware that they can go to court against the member of council to enforce the MCA so all game changers I think okay so um, it, the, the cost of this as you said uh, it's kind of a theme we've talked uh, you know about some other things where municipalities have introduced new services um, and it's unknown. There's unknowns, yeah. right? What the cost of it's going to be, how big the uptake's going to be. Right. Uh, but the good news for uh, folks who have legitimate complaints is you no longer have to go through that costly process. And on the council side, um, they're not uh, undertaking the expense either of getting independent legal advice right. and, and and all of that. Um, what are the other uh changes that we're seeing? Oh, uh, the, the other changes, of course, are that now local boards have to have codes of conduct. Yes. So that's that's new. Before, it was, of course, it was always permissive for councils. And I think actually a lot of councils don't know this. So they should really should have integrity commissioners who tell them, look, you have to have it for yourself, but you also have to have it for your local board members. And of course, the advice giving function is also for them. So I think that's, that's new. Uh, and I think training education, as I said at the conference, is... Uh, uh, imperative. You have to be able to advise them because it's so it's so preventative of things. You know, if if you can give them a two hour training session and they hear it from you once, they may not have to come to you, you know, three, four times throughout the term or even more to get advice. They may get it once. They may understand it. Uh, having said that, um, sometimes you do need the specific advice on the specific matter. One of my things today, one of my, my big comments is there's no bright line on when to do things or not do things. So sometimes it's really good to be able to go to the Integrity Commissioner. The other thing that I want to say that's something that really surprised me is uh, there's some municipalities that think that you have to have two Integrity Commissioners, one to do the advice giving function and one to do the, uh, uh, the investigations. I don't think so. 
I don't understand why that's the case. The uh, Office of the Federal uh, um, Integrity Commissioner, as well as the Provincial, run on the basis that they their advice giving and their enforcement agencies. Uh, the Toronto uh, Integrity Commissioner Office has always worked like that. If you go back to the Madam Justice Bellamy's MFP public inquiry report, she says the two main things that Integrity Commissioner does is advise, and enforce. So it's always been enshrined. So I've never understood why you need to. I understand how it could get awkward at times, but I don't think you need a second integrity commissioner. And I don't really understand municipalities that say that's the only way you can do it. Okay. So um, in all of this, you know, we talked about the benefits for uh, for council and uh, so on. There's some benefits here for staff with this. Uh, New, new regime as well. It, it sure is because staff, as you know, we're always the. If if they get on well with council members, and often staff do want to get on well, they may not necessarily want to be close friends, but they they want to be collegial, and sometimes they be asked the questions. Now they can at least say. I'm sorry, first of all, I'm not qualified to give you the, the, those answers. Two, I don't think the authority of my uh, office as, you know, the, the clerk, the municipal solicitor, the treasurer actually extends to giving you advice. There is someone that you can go to, a professional, an expert, who you can get the advice from. So I think that will really help staff. I think the people will really help, especially on the MCIA, and you heard it in the in the Magder and Ford case that went to all the way to the Supreme Court of Canada, where uh, Mayor Ford at one point said, well, why didn't the city solicitor tell me I had a conflict of interest? Why didn't the city clerk? They were all sitting there. Well, because it's not their obligation. So I think it's going to take a lot of pressure. Uh, as Suzanne Craig said, my co-panelist today, she said, make us the bad guys. I always think we're the good guys. But I, I understand what she's saying. She's saying, look, it's not your responsibility. You have an independent, impartial, and expert person. Go to them. Exactly. And send the media to them as well. Yes. Even though I'll tell you on that, on the media... I don't think it's appropriate for the integrity commissioner to speak before he or she has reported. I think it's wrong. And I completely understand if the media wants to just understand what the rules, procedures, sure. but they will often ask more. And I don't think it's appropriate. I don't think you should be trying things in the uh, in the media. Yes. I think the reports should speak for themselves. I think there should be no uh, discussions with the media prior to the matter getting to council. Afterwards, it's always a question of whether you do or don't. And sometimes if I'm requested by the council, I'm happy to speak to the media, love speaking to the media, uh, but I don't know that it's necessarily an appropriate thing to do in all cases. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so this does uh, bring up the, uh, the this new requirement to you. Uh, uh, the Integrity Commissioner is not only educating council yeah. and staff. But there's also a requirement that they're educating the public. The public, yes. right. And I think councils got a little uh, uptight about that. They mean, uh, they thought it meant, oh, residents can call you at any time and you have to, no, that's not really what it means. But yeah, part of my function is to help residents. Uh, in the DiBiase and City of Vaughan case that went to divisional court, they, uh, the, the court said, well, you can't expect a lay person to know all of these complex rules. So clearly the integrity commissioner should help, can even reformulate a complaint. I think that caught a lot of council members off guard. Believe me, I don't I don't generally reformulate a complaint, but I'll often say to the complainant, look, you've given me something. I don't really think you meant to say this. Didn't you really mean to say this? It's your choice. You go. So I think that there's that education, but I think at least once a year, there should be an open public session where you may be training and educating the council as a whole, the members themselves, staff should be invited, but also the public. And the public should be able to come and ask questions. Just sort of say, why am I coming to you? Why don't I go to the ombudsman? And I think that's the proper opportunity to do that. Okay. Yeah. One last thing. New provision uh, included around... Uh, influencing staff. Mm. Let's talk about that. Yeah, uh, I always call it the Hazel McCallion Amendment because, uh, as you know, uh, Hazel McCallion, when the uh, judicial inquiry went ahead in Mississauga on the whole question of uh, was she benefiting her son, Peter McCallion, the question, uh, uh, Hazel McCallion said, hold on, I completely complied with the Municipal Conflict of Interest Act. The courts have said it's a complete code dealing with conflicts of interest. Every time there was a there was a, a matter at committee or a council, I declared a pecuniaries and I didn't vote on it. Well, 
what Justice Cunningham found is that behind the scenes, she was doing everything that she could to propagate the hotel and convention center complex, which indirectly benefited her son, who seemed to have an equity interest in world-class developments, the proponent. And so, uh, you know, the, 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 the issue is um, uh, that it's broader than people thought that it initially was. And so it, it's, 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 it's a little different than what the rules were before. Before, so council members really just really need to know that. Yeah. So, so now uh, the the legislation clearly says not only do you have to declare the interest at council, but if it matter doesn't get to council, and Susan, you know a lot of things will not get to council unless staff move it along. So you can't go to staff and actually get them to do it. So you can't use your office to move it ahead. I think that's going to be a real education for council members because they think that they can go to staff and say, no, you're bringing it to council. I know I'm only one member, but you're doing it. And, you know, there's this influence of office and council Absolutely. members have to be afraid of that. Uh, have to be at least mindful of it, not afraid of it, but mindful of it and not use it inappropriately. Okay. And uh, council members, mayor's included in that, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, a mayor is a member of council, uh, is the head of council, and in most cases only has one vote. Yes, they're the leader, they're the spokesperson, but really it's like a weak mayor system here in Ontario. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, big changes uh, for uh, Ontario communities, yep. uh, and I'm sure we're, we'll see uh, more things evolve uh, a as we have. Cases. I I think the first the first term this first term yeah. is going to be very very uh, uh, it's going to be tough I think on some councils that don't know how things work, and uh, I think you're going to see uh, some clarity after this first term. I, th I think that's what's going to happen. I know Municipal World will be covering it. We absolutely yeah. will be. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I'm Susan Gardner from Municipal World. We share your stories. Mm -hmm.